Hello, everyone. Welcome. I see our attendee numbers rising. Thank you guys all for being here. Um, I would say get yourself a snack and a drink because you're going to be hungry while we have this author talk. I'm um, just going to give it a minute before we start to let more attendees log in. Um, it's always kind of fun to see the silver lining for these virtual events to see how many people we can reach kind of like across the country and the world. So if you feel so inclined, let us know where you're logging in from in the chat. And I'm also going to put the link to buy a personalized copy of Hot Cheese there as well from Book Larder. <laughs> nice, we got some from Seattle for sure. I feel like we'll get quite a few of those. Maybe some from Rhode Island too. Um, yeah, all right, we got a good amount of people here. I love how fast that number just goes up. Um, so we're ready to get started and uh, I'm just gonna introduce myself. My name is Abby and I am the events coordinator at Book Larder, which is a community cookbook store over in Seattle, Washington. And welcome to our hot cheese author talk. Um, where we're going to be talking with Paulina Chesnikova. Um, and this one is especially dear to my heart and Book Larder's heart because Paulina uh, works at Book Larder. She works in the store and she teaches cooking classes there. She's a recipe developer, food writer, um, and she asked also will be having a class on hot cheese coming up this month. And I'll also put that link in the chat as well um, because that's also virtual. So you guys can join in and cook along. You're probably going to want to after you watch her demo and look at some of these recipes. Um, today, Paulina is going to be in conversation with Erin Harris, also known as the Cheese Poet. Erin uh, is a certified cheese professional and she wrote the Essential Fondue Cookbook. And so this is going to be a great talk and I won't even do any cheese puns. Um, last thing, at the bottom of your screen, there should be a little Q&A thing if you guys have got questions during the talk. Just throw your questions in there and then we'll get to those towards the end, as many as we can fit in. Um, and I think that's it. So I'm gonna turn it over to Paulina and Aaron. All right. Hey, hey Paulina. Hi, hi everyone. Hi everyone that's joined us. So right at the top of the, uh, the hour, Without cheers. wasting any time, I thought yeah. it might be fun to to cheers Paulina on the launch, the success of her very first cookbook, Hot Cheese. This is a big week for Paulina, and uh, it, it was a couple years in the making, I think, this book, and it's a labor of love. And so, three cheers to Paulina for Hot cheers. Cheese. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. All right. Great way to kick oh. off this author talk. Every author talk should be s start with a cheers. Some... Start off with a sip of something. Yeah. Festive. Yeah. All right. So, Paulina, hot cheese. Yeah, hot when cheese. Did, when did you start writing hot cheese? I started writing hot cheese. So we are in 2020. I started right seriously working on it uh february 2019 um i was reached out chronicle reached out to me in december 2018 um about writing the book and it was a few weeks of of back and forth writing a book proposal for the book just so you know everyone's vision was aligned um getting the table contents ready and then i kind of dived in uh, into recipe testing and developing in February. So, okay, and so I you, had- every, You got quite into it right away. Yeah, right away. It was a really, yeah, it was uh, fairly quick, I think, as cookbooks go. I think you know a little bit about that, Erin, <laughs> with, with your fondue book. But yeah, I started in February and I more or less had everything finalized, at least on my end, by September. Okay, so. so when I was thinking about writing down some questions for you for today, mm -hmm. one of the first questions that came to mind was, um, was there a recipe that like, as soon as you were asked to write this book, it was like the first recipe that they're like, oh yeah, I have to get this right. recipe in there. Right. 
I mean, I think the obvious answer is Hachapuri. Uh, and I even write about that in my introduction. It's a uh, cheesy bread from Republic of Georgia, which is where my family's from and emigrated from. And so it is always a part of all of our family gatherings, just, you know, a regular Sunday or like a special occasion. And we, there are, there are multiple, there are different versions of Hachapuri throughout the country. And so, you know, I grew up with the cheese boat that everyone knows, the Ajahuri Hachapuri, which you have. Does it look here. something, something like this? Yes, there you go. The magic of internet. <laughs> yeah, voila. Um, yeah, so you have the cheese boat, the Ajuruli Hachapuri, you have Imaruli Hachapuri, which is kind of, it kind of looks like a, like a stuff, like a flat stuffed calzone almost. Okay. Um, or like a quesadilla, uh, but it's like in the sort of yeasted dough. And then you have Hachapuri that's uh, baked in like puff pastry um, in like a short puff pastry. So I grew up with all with all of those versions, you know, I was a really, really picky kid uh, growing up. Like all I ate was like hot dogs and chips, but I'd always eat. <laughs> when Hachapuri made it to the table, I'd always make sure to eat a slice or two. So that was nice. definitely from the get-go. I was like, I have to include a recipe for that. And are there, when you say there's different variations, um, the, the one that I made today from your book, which was right. awesome, super mm -hmm. easy, super straightforward, um, absolutely delicious, my first time ever having this. Yeah. Uh, but like right away, I could see that there would be so many different things that you could add into that cheese mix. So is that, oh, yeah. is that part of? Yeah, I mean, traditionally, I think it's just cheese, but they have kind of like we have pizza restaurants here, they have hachipuri parlors where you go and that's all they make and they make every sort of you know version you could find but then you have all these mix-ins you know one one will have like sauteed mushrooms and onions other will have greens you can put they have like you know ones with meat so they I think they have a lot of fun with it so like once you have that base recipe you can kind of play around with different add-ins so awesome good to know um, okay, another question that, that came to mind, which this is a question that I get very often um, yeah. as somebody who also cooks with cheese a lot. So do you have a favorite cheese to cook with? Ooh, I, I, I know. Kind of <laughs> and it's hard to say there's, you know, I think for every, for every occasion, every dish, there's, you know, it's hard to pick a favorite because I have multiple favorites depending on what I'm cooking. Um, I would say... I think Gruyere and Comte just melt so well and they have such complexity and flavor that really carries through even when you cook with them. And they're so divert, like they're so versatile. You know, you can use them in baking, you can use them in cooking. So I love playing around with those. I mean, cheddar, like a sharp cheddar, again, super versatile. I been really into the summer and actually one of my favorite recipes in the book I have this um there's not a picture of it but I can pull up the four onion Oaxacan cheese quesadilla let's see what page is it on it's essentially it's a quesadilla with Oaxacan cheese which is just like the semi-firm string like cheese from Mexico it melts super well and the recipe that I have in the book, you can see it right there. Um, you blend it with cotija and all sorts of different onions and it melts and all those like the pungency and the flavor of the alliums kind of cut through the richness of the cheese and dipping into like sour cream and, and like lime pickled mm -hmm. red onions. It's so good. And there's uh, this family who sells fresh Oaxacan cheese and burrata and mozzarella kind of a, a funny like mix of you know selection but I just get fresh Oaxacan cheese from them every week from the farmer's market and so I've just wow. been just, just eating that quesadilla or just like you know whatever I have in the kitchen and throwing that into the mix it's been really really good awesome um, what's your favorite so what's your favorite to, to cook with Elizabeth? yeah I think you I think you kind of nailed it with the Gruyere or Conte yeah um, I think those two cheeses are if you, I, I almost never don't have them in my right. cheese store, you know, right. like I, I, I try to have them on hand all the time because 
there's not really a recipe that you can't use them in. You know, you can make a quesadilla right. with Gruyere or totally. your mac and cheese or, you know, yeah. grilled cheese, emergency right. grilled cheese sandwich situation, yeah. you know? So yeah, I, I try and always keep one of the two on hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the writing process, this is your first cookbook. And I, yeah. I know that you wanted to write cookbooks for a really long time. Um, mm -hmm. Now that you've gone through the cookbook writing process, was there anything that really surprised you about the process? Any, I would say like your favorite part about it or your not favorite right. part? For me, I mean, you know, you spend so much time developing the recipe and then you sit down and you write it, which always takes much longer than you think. But then also writing the head note, you know, with with books often you have a limit of how many words can you know can you they you know how many words they allot for each recipe or each section and if it was up to me i'd like write an entire like page on, you know of like a head note alone for each recipe and so just because you have like your story and then kind of how you want to talk the reader about through how to cook cook it and how you can do things in advance or you know play around with it so I was kind of surprised to see how long those took me and how long it actually took to like edit those, those head notes. Like those definitely took the, the longest of the writing process just because you want it to be short and succinct. And like, as you know, the shorter something has to be, the harder it is to write. It's true. So, yeah, yeah. Those, those, you know, two, two to three sentences Right. You want to pack so much into that right. that small amount of space. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I would agree. I've only done one, but that was the hardest part for me as right. well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So it's a, it's a big week for Paulina, not just because she has a, a cookbook launching this week, her first cookbook, but she's also getting married. Yeah. And so congratulations on Thanks. that. And she this again. question, yes. Cheers, mm -hmm. cheers again to getting married in the time of COVID, middle oh of the gosh. pandemic. I was, I was saying a little bit earlier that I, I feel like there's something kind of romantic about that. Um, yeah. Personally, you know, I think it's a year from now when you're, when you're thinking about um, maybe renewing your vows from right. a, a year before. It's, it's a neat story to tell. So cheers. Cheers. Okay. So the question is, if we could travel right now. Right and you could go on your, your dream honeymoon destination that also is a cheese destination, what would it be? Ooh. Um, that's really hard. Can I, can I like make it a road trip through a few different Yes, countries? it's your, it's your dream trip. Right. But there's the, the only, the only catch is that it has to have some cheese involved somehow. Yeah. I would say, I mean, I feel like this is so cliche, but I like, I've never been to France. I've never been to Paris, not just Paris, but just like Southern France and in the countryside. And just like thinking of the amazing cheese shops they have in Paris and, and all the like amazing selection of, and just like, you know, selection of cheeses from like small farms that you like won't find any like outside of the country or even like that cheese shop do you know what i mean that's true i think i think that would be really really special paired with like all their amazing breads and charcuterie i think you can't really beat that um that city that country i'd also i mean again italy very similar and i just find that you know getting really good quality cheese in those countries are just it's really easy like it's really accessible i remember um libby who's actually watching she and i spent a few days in rome and we had you know we were staying in an apartment but right below there's a little just farmer's market on the street and you know we were in like the middle of the city and like there's each stall was devoted to like you know the fish guy the you know the the far you know the vegetable stand and then they had this just like an amazing like especially by like u.s standards this like really elaborate cheese counter that was like for them just like i don't know just like didn't blink an eye right um and it's just like we would go down and get all of our cheeses get our tomatoes our baguette 
and like just have like the most amazing picnics. So yeah, I'm, become... I'm like, I, I love picnics. I, everywhere I travel, I try to, you know, put together a picnic spread and, and try to eat it somewhere beautiful. So I think yeah, like the most simple meals can become the most memorable when you're right. traveling in places like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, I'm, I'm sure you'll get to France. Um, one yeah. of these days. I think that's, yeah, that's got to be part of your, your cheese experience. Oh my gosh. Like, yeah. Yeah. One um, day. So, so that kind of leads into the next question, which is, um, so you're having a small wedding reception mm -hmm. this week. Will there okay. be cheese at your wedding reception? Yes. So, and I, uh, it's so funny. I've been planning everything last minute. Uh, I don't know if Janae is watching, but I have a, a, there. a friend. I saw, I saw yeah. Yeah. Seattle. There she is. And, and I've just been, you know, kind of stretched in with everything going on. And I, I'm like, I'm, you know, looking on Costco's website, trying to figure out like, okay, do I need like fancy nut mix or, or like, you know, just trying to figure out, I'm like, oh, maybe I can get like Tillamook cheese and cut it into cubes and, and put it on skewers. Right. And, and serve it. I'm like, wait, what am I doing? Like I have, I'm like friends with like the best cheese mongers in the city. Like, let me just reach out to one of them. So I, I reached out to Janae and she is happy to put, to, she's going to put together a really beautiful, oh, I'm sure, score. cheese plate. Yeah. That's so, awesome. The mobile I, monger is hooking you yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't know what cheeses she has in store for us, but I'm excited oh, for whatever she comes up with. No, knowing Janae, I know yeah. she's got, she's got connections to like the best cheese pretty much. Right, so. right. I'm really excited. So Oh, that definitely, is exciting. Definitely will have cheese. Can't, okay. It's not a celebration without one these days. I agree. Absolutely. Okay, what other questions do I have for you here? Back to the book. Okay, so full disclosure. <laughs> yeah, you can talk about the wedding for hours, but yeah. yeah but. Full disclosure, the book didn't show up for me just yet. So this is as much of it as I have. I printed off the Kachapuri or Hachapuri. It's a silent K. Ha, yeah, it's Ha, 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 ha okay. Hachapuri. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I have only gotten to see the PDF version of the book, but um, back to the book. Is there, yeah. when, when people are talking to you about the book, is there a recipe Here's that a you- Here's a colorful photo oh, of it. That looks like mine. Yeah. No, I'm telling you, yours like is like textbook, textbook perfect. It's the recipe. It was a great recipe. I think that there was a line in the recipe that you said, um, you were talking about how to shape the the dough and you were you were talking about rolling it out into a circle this big and and pinching the corners and then you put a line in that said like what does it say this is a like basically keep in mind um that you're building a, a boat shape right and like that that's the kind of thing that if you haven't had this before and maybe there's not a picture maybe there is it's really important for people to to hear that kind of cue and they're like oh right. okay that makes that makes more sense what i'm trying to build here yeah um, so it was it was a great recipe really Thanks. easy to follow um, so the, okay, the question is, are there a few specific recipes that you tend to push people towards starting with in the book? With the book? I mean, for sure the Hachapuri, I mean, that is, that is special and it's something that you see and you think like, oh, I can't, I couldn't possibly do that. Like it's like, it just That's looks way too wow impressive. Factor. Yeah. But it, like you said, it's super straightforward and it is it's, you're just kind of dumping a ton of, you know, for the dough, you're just dumping a ton of ingredients in the, in the bowl, you knead it a little bit and, and you let it rest and just shape, it's just shaping. So, um, I would say a few, and for me, it was actually kind of getting me out of my comfort zone when I was, when I was developing and testing, um, in the finger food section, I have two fried, fried, uh, recipes. One is the fried raclette sticks yep. with a dill pickle tartar sauce. And then I also had the like lemon basil arancini, uh, lemon basil mozzarella arancini. And for me in the past, I always thought deep frying foods was just like not worth the effort. You know what I mean? It's just, it just seemed too, too much work, too much work and just kind of um, intimidating. Right. But just, I mean, again, I, I feel like I aim to, for all of my recipes to take something that looks complicated and just like really break it down and like really make it easy for folks to, to follow along and put it together. And 
I think with those, those two recipes, it's like, oh, those look amazing, but it's fried. I don't want to take it on. All you have to do is just buy like a bottle of oil and heat it in a pot. And as long as you've got your, all of your, you know, tools and your, and your, you know, food ready, it just, it's a really streamlined process, right? Um, yeah, I think the most, the most challenging part of, of that whole situation is disposing of the oil properly. Right, I was just about to say, it's like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with this whole with pot oil. Yeah. of oil? So, I mean, that is a little bit of a pain, but totally worth it when you worth have it. gooey, like fried ricotte sticks, crunchy. I mean, that was like one of my favorite. Oh, I was just going to say that sounds like it would be hard not to be a favorite recipe. Yeah, yeah. And what was your inspiration on putting it with tartar sauce or something like a tartar sauce with the pickles and, I and didn't, whatnot? You know, when I went to develop each recipe and, and you know, thinking of, you know, we have the, with like some amino acid, salt, fat, acid, heat, like I feel as if a good dish is well balanced. And so it was really important for every recipe in this book for me to have a really good balance of, of that acid because hot cheese, melty cheese can get really rich really quickly. And, right, and, you, and it just kind of starts to weigh you down really quickly if you don't have that brightness. So if you look at every recipe I have, some, that like one element, whether it's like from citrus or vinegar or whatnot that really kind of cuts all the richness and really brightens um, the dish. And so with the raclette sticks, obviously you've got really funky, rich raclette, you know, fried with, with breadcrumbs and okay, like how do I, what do I, you know, how do I pair it? How do I make it, you know, where you just can't stop, right? So with the dill pick, with the tartar sauce, it's like, I took it and I was like, okay, how am I, like, just trying to figure out how, how can I get away with like as much acid as I can? So I think I add pickle, I, I don't just add pickles in there, but I also add the pickle juice too, uh, to really brighten it. And it just, it's really, really wonderful with the raclette sticks. Yeah, my mouth is like fully watering right now. Yeah. I can I can yeah. totally taste it and, yeah. and imagine, just like imagine creamy, like crunch. yeah, it's yeah. creamy, bright with the the fried, the melty, gooey cheese and the crunch of the breadcrumbs. It's really good. Awesome. That's that's definitely going to be one that I make. Yeah. And I think that sounds like perfect fall food, which we're starting to uh, oh, to yeah. transition into colder weather, mm -hmm. which means melted hot cheese. We just, right. you know, we start craving that kind yeah. of richness. And I even think this time of year is perfect because you still have, you know, warm days, right? Um, but the nights are cooler. And so you, you're not totally swearing off your oven or stove. Like you're, you're starting to get excited to get back in the kitchen and think like, and also realize like, oh, it's not, you know, 95 degrees and sweltering. Maybe, I don't know what it's like for people tuning in in Virginia and like, <laughs> you know, South Carolina, but here in Might Seattle, still be a little warm there. tapering off, but you still have all like the wonderful produce from the, you know, all the tomatoes and eggplants and all the beautiful herbs. So it's really just wonderful time to cook. And I, definitely- I totally agree. Yeah. I'm so inspired to keep cooking these days. It's like yeah. the bounty is, is here for us to play with. Right, right. I've got a question here that we can answer. Um, okay. So Olga asked, um, uh -huh. how do you feel about fish and cheese and specifically other than a tuna melt? So most people have grown up on tuna melts, but, but what do you think about fish and cheese otherwise? That's so funny because I like my immediate answer was my tuna melt in the in I'm the, a huge tuna melt lover. Every now and then you'll see me post about it on my Instagram. Right. So before I, and I, here I am talking about the tuna melt. I'm sorry, Olga, but. Yeah, sorry, Olga. <laughs> but before I, I, you know, started to test this recipe, I knew I wanted to include it, but I just didn't get tuna melts. I thought like fish and cheese, like that just doesn't sound appealing to me. Like I just didn't, you know, it's like I've worked in, in, you know, cafes where one of the main things we made was sandwiches and like, we'd always sell the tuna melt and I would never eat it. Cause I was just like, just, I didn't get it. And then I, and I made this, the tuna melt and I topped it with a dill Havarti cheese. 
and I and I and you in the book you um, put it over rye bread like really good dense rye bread and I'm like oh my gosh I just found myself craving it around the clock for days I just like wanted it for every meal and I don't know I don't know yeah so I think for for me um you know there, there's definitely ways to do fish and cheese in right. a bad way like there's, right. there's totally. combinations out there that don't work um, but one of my favorite French recipes, actually, speaking back to Conte, um, mm-hmm. and, and put this on your list of dishes to try when you get to France one day, um, it's Coquille Saint-Jacques. And what it is, is um, basically seared scallops. In, oh. uh, and you serve them on the, the shell, and you put uh, Conte cheese on top with a little bit of sauce, and you put them under the broiler. And, and oh my gosh, that sounds oh. amazing. They're ridiculously good because I think what some cheeses and fish um, together work on the brininess and the sweetness right. of the fish. Right. I was going to say scallops are so sweet. Exactly. And I feel like they would pair so well with the sweetness in, in the Comte de and in the nuttiness. And... It's a pretty mm-hmm. fabulous dish. Yeah. So for me, it's two way. thumbs up for fish and cheese, but I think like there's ways to do it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And like conservas, we've seen a huge popularity in, in mm-hmm. tinned fish coming in on charcuterie boards as well. Right. Right. It's yeah. true. And yeah, all sorts of, of tinned fish, not just tuna, sardines. I mean, even just, you know, having a sardine toast with shaved manchego or parmesan would be delicious. Delish. Yeah. I think there's probably going to be some fish and cheese recipes in your next book too. Cause I feel like yeah. you're probably going to want to. The wheels explore, are turning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Explore this direction. Um, okay. What else can I ask you? I know we're going into a, a cooking demonstration as well. Is it time for that or should we? Yeah, yeah. sure. Sure. Um, so I, and there's actually a photo of it. I don't know if mine will be as pretty as the ones in the book. It's okay. They are the, Spec wrapped date stuff with gorgonzola and picante. And the inspiration for these is when I lived in Charlottesville, Virginia, there was a tapas restaurant and they would always do bacon wrapped dates. And that was definitely by far like their number one dish. They were super popular. And I thought they were delicious, but I always felt like they were missing cheese. <laughs> right. And so I played around and also I just wanted to get away from, I mean, you can't really get, go wrong with like smoky, salty, porky, something, nope. right? <laughs> like with, with a sweet fruit and, and something and with cheese and, you know, I was like, okay, I can do this prosciutto, but I've seen that before, how to make it special. So I, I landed on the spec, which is, you know, a smoked prosciutto from Northern Italy and it's rubbed with like Jupiter and bay leaf and if you, all, you know, all sorts of different spices. So it has that, has that like je ne sais quoi, you know, like that something yeah. that makes it really same. Yeah, I feel like spec is, is, um, you know, obviously it's very popular in Italy, but right. I, I feel like at least where I live, you don't see it as often. You don't see it on menus or in recipes as much. Right. So I, I think it's something that people can really fall in love with. Right. And, you know, you can use it anywhere that you'd use prosciutto or bacon, right? And I thought it was just something that was, just felt a little, you know, a bit of a twist and and added the extra flavor. Um, And I feel like you can start, I'm starting to find it in more and more grocery stores. It's not, you know, you don't have to go to your specialty Mm -hmm you know, cheese shop, which, I mean, you should, you should support it, right? Um, it's a nice, I'm, freshly sliced speck. Right. That's I mean, hard to say. Yeah, freshly sliced speck. <laughs> right. You can't beat that. Um, but you're starting to see it more in larger grocery stores too. Um, and so got the speck, medjool dates. I love medjools because they're just super juicy and, yes. and just very like, luscious and just a really wonderful texture and and because they have that moisture they won't dry out in the oven right so and then thinking of cheese I kind of went through lots of different iterations I mean and I say like if you don't have the gorgonzola you could use the chef I played around with Taleggio mm-hmm. which was really delicious but I kind of found that it 
kind of got lost, like the, the funkiness of the pleasure kind of got lost from, you know. It was just with, creamy. They're just creamy, which was good, but you, the, its flavors didn't really come out. And I felt like Gorgonzola just really kind of held its own, right? Um, and so Gorgonzola Picante, I just wanted something spicy and robust. Today I'm using Rogue Creameries. I am blanking oh, on very, its name. Very nice. Right. Um, but Great local to you cheese. Right, sort of local. I was really looking for Cascaded Creamery's Glacier Blue, but the store didn't have it. So this was local, local yes. enough. But it's really, the cheese is really robust and fruity. So you just want something that will, that has that spice, that has that robustness that will yeah. um, We have a, a comment here from um, Laura Worlin, another cookbook author who is always a great supporter as well. So hi, Laura. It's nice to see you there. Um, she's saying that La Quercia's um, Spec Americano is awesome. So yeah. there's an American producer of Spec that you can try out as well. Yeah. Yeah, they're super good. They, I, again, I, I looked for that and they didn't have it. Um, I got Murray's Spec, which was, you know, that's what I, that's what the store had. But really, there's just a lot of wonderful options out there. Um, so you've got got the spec so this is kind of like what one slice looks like and i like to you could totally use one slice um but i like to basically just i don't know cut it in half if i had a cameraman he i'd have a good angle to to get all the action but just cut it in half lengthwise and i've got my date here and you, just, you've already taken the uh, the pits out of the dates, or is that already done? In no, the I'm about to just just show it's really easy. Oh, okay, but just kind of cut into it lengthwise, take the pit out, and just I've got my blue cheese here. Oh, that's a nice that. big chunk. Yes, shove it in there. Yeah, you want to be generous, and like I, you know, it's almost silly to even make this a recipe. It's definitely like a. a a no recipe recipe where you just need to get a right More. you just need to assemble you just you you get your dates you get your blue cheese your spec and then really you could just stuff to your heart's content um and then you just wrap it oh that looks delicious already and what i noticed was that um and i'm just putting it on a baking sheet that's lined with parchment paper and i found that and I'm just going to keep rolling them here that you don't even need to like stick a toothpick or anything in them. It doesn't, it doesn't, it, they keep their shape. And I put it on the, under the broiler for four to five minutes okay. and it's just enough time to crisp up, to crisp up the spec, kind of like render its fat a little bit, warm through the date. And then the, and the cheese starts to get really nice and gooey. Ooh. And it's a just, it's a really, you know, it's a wonderful appetizer or snack to put out when you have guests or, you know, who knows how much hosting we'll be doing these holidays, but just, you know, with your family. Yeah, and for you a can small just, gathering. Right, and there's easy enough that you can get everyone involved um, or just give, give the task to someone. Um, and you just pop them in and they're done in four or five minutes and you want to let them cool for like a minute or two, but they're like ready to go. And that's another so, thing that you could do ahead of time, right? Oh yeah, you can Get totally them. assemble these ahead of time. And then when it's, when it's, when they're, you know, we got guests coming in, you just pop in the oven and they're, and they're, they're ready. So yeah. I'm just going to throw them. I got my broiler. I usually put it on high. I've got a new, just, you know, moved into this house a few weeks ago. I put it on 450. I don't know. Hopefully that will work. Okay. Sounds high enough, right? We'll keep an eye on it. Yeah. So, so let's get this straight. So you just launched your cookbook. You're right. getting married and you moved. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been pretty crazy on, on my end. Yeah, I've been juggling a lot, but it's all, you know, I, I get overwhelmed, but I remind myself that I'm really fortunate that I have all these. It's all great stuff. All great stuff, all wonderful things to, to look forward to and, and relish in and celebrate, so. Very yeah. good. 
Okay, yeah. so we had a question over here that I think is a great little little segue. Um, okay. So, what was so? Can you tell us about some basic wine pairings and maybe what you would even pair with? Oh, is that not your? <laughs> it's now on the wine pairings. What What would you want to drink with those gorgonzola stuffed dates I... wrapped in speck? Right. I would want, because it's so rich and smoky and there's a lot going on, I would kind of want something fizzy or bubbly to kind of cut through the richness. I mean, I think that's just my go-to in general when I'm eating anything rich and especially like rich, creamy cheeses. So I would do like a nice sparkling rosé. Have you ever had Lambrusco from, from Italy? Lambrusco? Lambrusco? Oh, I love, oh yeah, 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 yeah. sparkling red, perfect. Um, there you go. We, we went out to a really wonderful Italian restaurant last night to celebrate hot cheese, and they have, you know, beautiful awesome. pizzas, celebrated hot cheese with hot cheese, and we got there, I am blanking on the name, but this wonderful sparkling red that is just like my go-to when I go out to eat for pizza. It's just, it's so drinkable, and it just really just pairs well with those flavors and all the textures. I don't know, I think you probably can speak better to. I don't know about better, but I think I, I reach for sparkling wines very often right. when it comes to um, um, pairing with, with cheese dishes. You know, maybe maybe not quite as much with if it's a full meal, right. um, but more for appetizers or cheese plates or whatnot. I almost always start with some kind of a cava right. or um, so. For those of you who might not know what Lambrusco tends to have a little bit of sweetness to it as well. Yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. they can be a little bit more dry, but they go so well with cheese. They're just such a yeah. fun pairing. Um, so yeah, you're always, you always want to like balance the, the richness with some acid, essentially. Right. Or just wine. even like a nice dry cider, right? Like a nice Spanish dry cider would go, maybe not necessarily with this dish, but a lot of the, the dishes in, in the book. Um, you have that nice dryness and, and again, that, that bu those bubbles. I am not a, I, I love to cook with cheese. I would not say I am like a wine and cheese expert. That's all good. Yeah. We all have our, our different um, path that we're on, right? Right, um, right. I was recently um, part of a, a beer and cheese tasting and I think it was pretty obvious that the, the, uh, the feeling on that, that session was that beer is the superior pairing element for to go with cheese because it's easy oh, really? and it's funky and it you know it's always effervescent and, and yeah. yeah so so don't forget about beer too there's so many out there especially in the realm of craft beer that we have these days right do you would you say would you say sours go well with did you try any sours when you did your pairing uh, we did actually we had a, a sour that had a really nice tropical um, mm. vibe to it and and we yeah. had a sheep's milk cheese with it an aged sheep's milk cheese that Ooh. also had some tropical notes to it right. and yeah it was it was pretty nice together that sounds good yeah. yeah yeah so I don't have too too many other questions for you let's see if there's um, somebody here Leslie says that she was making the Russian French style chicken tonight yeah that, that sounds... is one of my favorite dishes um, and I there's a photo of it too that is a dish that is super nostalgic um oh Janae, Janae, it looks saying, like Janae made it yeah she made it too that's so cool so tell us about the inspiration for this recipe right this is and I know my mom's watching um this is a dish that my mom and I think it's like one of those I feel like you know in the U.S. you have all those like casseroles type dishes from the 70s that was like very high housewife like easy to like put together and serve to a crowd and I feel like this dish is definitely kind of has that like 70s retro vibe. And my mom would make it often, not necessarily with chicken, but with beef, like a nice like um, round steak and, and kind of beat it really thinly. Okay. Yeah. And, and for those who don't know what the recipe is, it is essentially meat that's covered with sliced uh, peppers and onions and then topped with um, a really like just like any sort of like nice melty cheese um, okay. and it's all baked until the cheese is, has like a nice golden brown top and and the and the meat is really juicy and um oops oh there's your timer 
Better get those stuffed dates out of there. Oh yeah, those look good. Thanks, Laura. I see your question there. We'll get to that one next. You know what? I think I might do one more minute. One more minute. So are they not quite crispy enough yet? Yeah, I want them to get a little bit crispier. The, the cheese is starting to get, starting to ooze, but I kind of want the speck to get a bit crispier. So the dish, kind of the, I'm trying to think the history. I mean, so many of dishes, Russian dishes that we eat are kind of have find their roots in French cuisine, just because, um, especially during like Peter the Great in the 17th, I oh mean, my <laughs> history, 17th, 17, 1600, 17th century, he brought in a lot of influence from France and they had a lot of chefs come in from France. And so a lot of these dishes, they just had a lot of um, kind of back and forth in the kitchen. And so there was a Count Orloff. I think it originally was, it was originally, sorry, I'm like rambling. It was originally made with veal and it was called veal Orloff and it's all coming back to me. And it was kind of commissioned by this Count, Count Orloff. He was like an ambassador to France from Russia and he asked his chef to like come up with this elaborate dish and I think it used to it used to be made with like bechamel it was like a much more decadent and like over the top and over time it got simplified especially during you know Soviet times where they didn't have any much of anything right and so now it's just this very kind of common just nostalgic dish that is made. Um, it's, it's really great to feed a crowd. And, and is there something specific that you serve it with? Would you serve it with rice or potatoes on the side or bread? Definitely potatoes. potatoes. Russians love their potatoes, right? Um, mashed potatoes, just because you got the juiciness of all the chicken. With, and I love that the way that the onions and the peppers, they start to you know cook down and they still retain they're nice and sweet and they're cooked, but they still retain their crunch, which is really nice um, against, you know, the melty. I think it's a, any sort of like baby Swiss or Gruyere or Comte, any sort Gruyere. of nice. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Um, that, that reference back to our, our go-to cooking cheeses. Yeah. Okay, let's see these, let's see these stuffed dates. Ooh. Hold on, <laughs> let, me, let me try not yeah, to... Don't burn, burn myself in front of the. So my 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 pap my parchment paper is. Oh, uh, look at that ooze of the cheese out the ends a little right, bit. Right, right. So you've got the the cheese is starting to ooze on the ends. The the speck is nice and crispy, and then the the dates just start to like plump and blister under the heat. Yeah. So do you think there's another dried fruit that you could use in place of dates if you if you didn't have them or you didn't like yeah, them? Yeah, I tried it with prunes. And the prunes were really, really good. Um, apricots, I think you could try stuffing. And I think that would go well with the blue cheese as well. Yeah, I think, I think so too. I think you can just kind of play around with it. And again, play around with figs, Olga says. Dried figs, figs. yeah. Yep. Um, you can... And, and, playing around with the different fruit, you can play around with different cheese pairings, right? Um, again, you can try the, the fig with the chev or... I've done, like, um, I've done a, a chunk of uh, manchego, a more aged, because I think the oh, six, right, months, right. six months was going to melt a little bit more, but you, then like you were saying earlier, that flavor sometimes dissipates a little bit too much. So I've had success with like a 12-month manchego yeah. in something like that. Yeah. It can be pretty awesome. Um, okay, there's some questions. There's questions coming in. So, okay, like for, first up, we've got a, a, another little question here from Olga. She's asking, will you have Olivi, the Russian potato salad, at your wedding? Did I say it right? No, Olivi? It's, it's Olivier Salat. It's a very classic Russian dish of just like potatoes, eggs, peas, carrots. People put like traditionally, it's like bologna or like or you can do bologna or chicken, shredded chicken, some, and, and like pickles, definitely pickles. And you can add apples to it. I personally don't like apples in it or chicken. My mom makes it. And then it's like, whatever my mom makes, that's what I like most. So she, yes. she makes it with, with um, chopped bologna. And, you, and it's, you toss it with lots of mayonnaise and dill. Okay. And is this something that is traditionally served at weddings? 
Is that why she, no? Maybe, I think it's just something, yeah, it's just something that serves like at any- Gatherings. At any gatherings. Parties, yeah. Right, um, no, I'm not gonna have any Russian food. We are getting takeout from the Vietnamese pool hall across the street. Oh, very interesting. What that, was, the, what was the, the inspiration behind that? Um, when we moved here, our friends were like, oh my gosh, you live across the street from Billiard Wong. Like this is like <laughs> the best Vietnamese restaurant like in Seattle, it's so good. And it's just like this really cool pool hall that just happens to make really good Vietnamese food. And it's kind of become our go-to takeout food. And we're like, you know, with COVID it's just like hard to plan catering food and food options and so we just decide to keep it simple and we know it's really tasty and and I called ahead of time to like try to put an order and she's like oh just call me the day be like the day no, like, like the night before wedding. <laughs> right and I was like okay do you need my name or number she's like no just ask for Jeannie bye I was like okay <laughs> I was gonna roll with it, right? Yeah, right. So, and that's like that's kind of the vibe we're going for. So it's it's perfect. So um, back to Laura Worland. She's she would like to know a little bit more about your background. Um, she's saying, what drove you to cook in the first place? Do you have any formal training? Yeah, yeah she's she's super impressed. She's saying she's so impressive. What you what yeah you've done here? So I definitely wanted like put out this disclaimer, I am like, like, unlike you, who is a certified cheese professional, I am not a cheese professional. I am a, definitely a cheese enthusiast. I love cheese. I, I really appreciate it. Um, but I've never, you know, trained behind the counter and, and slung cheese is just uh, something that I really love. But how I, my background, I, my, my mom has four other sisters that live in Rhode Island. And all of those women are just amazing cooks and bakers. And I just, food was just always around. It was always very important uh, to everyone and just a very integral part of all of our family gatherings. Even, and even when I wasn't interested in food and was a picky kid, like it, I still got it, you know, like it was always a big deal. And got really, you know, developed my own passion and, and love for cooking, especially my like first, I would say my first love was baking in high school and really got into it. And, you know, growing up in a very traditional immigrant family where, you know, the, the you're either a lawyer, a doctor, you know, a business person, those were kind of my options. And so I went to school in Virginia thinking I was going to do pre-med realized halfway through that I was like miserable, did not want to do that. And meanwhile, I was like spending more time like in the kitchen cooking and baking for friends than I was studying, which not that great. Cool. But it was also just like a huge, you know, it just, it showed me like, oh, maybe this is what I should be um, focusing on. So I decided to kind of pursue that outside of the classroom and started working in kitchens in the summertime. When I went home, Rhode Island, I started working in bakeries, started working um, and started working at a bakery in college. I got into slow food at UVA, okay. which for those who aren't familiar, is just a kind of global organization that's committed to kind of like the slower food ways, artisan craft food ways and reviving them and, mm -hmm. and uh, making sure they don't, that they continue to exist, yeah. right? Yeah, that's and, something we share in common, actually. I came up, um, you know, as I was in the culinary world, came up through the slow food movement as well. It's, oh, I, think really? it's, I think it's something that a lot of people who have found cheese, actually, as a passion, have right. also have also discovered slow right. food. Right, and they have that yeah. amazing cheese festival every few years. Yes. And in bra. bra, yes, and and some of the people that are on this call have definitely been there before. Um, I right. haven't. That that's actually all, one of my bucket. I was um, literally like, trips. man, I I would love to tie my honeymoon. Yeah. <laughs> during one of those years <laughs> when they have, yeah. Does your so, fiance happen to love cheese just as much as you do? Yeah, he love. I wouldn't say. Yeah, he definitely enjoys cheese, loves it. I wouldn't say he geeks out over cheese, but. He but he appreciates your love oh, for it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, cool. Um, 
so yes, yeah, so I got into slow food and that connected me with people in the town of Charlottesville where, where I went to school. And through, through those connections, I ended up staying in Charlottesville and cooking in, um, cooking in this cafe. It was like a specialty food store market. And they had this really wonderful cheese counter that was headed by my dear friend, Sarah Ducci. I don't know if you know, Sarah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We follow each other. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Better, but yeah. Cheese world. It's small. Yeah, so. Cheese world. <laughs> and she, yeah, she just like, she managed this wonderful cheese counter. And so not only did we get to cook with the cheeses in the cafe, you know, using them all our different salads and, and sandwiches and specials, but after work each day, I would, you know, mosey over to the counter and being like, okay, like, what which cheese, yeah, what do you, what do, what do you have new? What are you excited about? Like, and I would take some home and, and try them and eat them. So, and that's actually when I first came across Culture Magazine, which is a magazine devoted to cheese. And so I'd say that at that time, you know, I loved to eat cheese, but I didn't know anything, you know, I thought Brie was like Presidente Brie, right? I didn't know there was more to that. And so that really opened the world of artisan specialty cheese. And from then on, yeah, just continued to work in kitchens, kind of wore a lot of hats, you know, tried to start my, well, I started my like food blog on Russian Georgian food. I took part, was like the food program coordinator for a festival. So just doing a lot. Um, mostly I, you know, my first job was savory and then I switched back to pastry. I was as a baker at a different gourmet market and I had a really bad accident, a car accident where um, my my left hand was was uh, was injured pretty terribly. And so that after that, I basically moved back home for about a year and was in and out of surgeries. Couldn't really I couldn't really work. Um, and so after a few months in, I just kind of starting to get stir crazy at home, not doing much. And I saw that, and I was in, I, you know, moved back home with my parents, saw that Culture Magazine was hiring a, a editorial intern. And I was like, okay, I know this magazine. I love cheese. It'll get me into Boston. My, my best friends are there. I'll get to see them. And yeah, so I interned with them. And then after that, I started to regularly write for them. And, and Aaron, you write for Culture Which is how too. we met. Yeah. Which is how we met, right? Yeah. And so I just started, yeah, I just started writing for them a lot and eventually moved out to Seattle because that's where my fiance is. Worked in kitchens for a bit, but realized just the professional, you know, restaurant setting is just not for me. It was just too intense. And just started to freelance, right? And recipe develop and kind of just, you know, all the work was just really informed by all of my kitchen experience in the past. And then Colt Chronicle, uh, who's the publisher of the book, found my work through Culture Magazine and they wanted to write a book on hot cheese. And they're like, your, your recipes look great. Would you be interested? And so here You're I am. On. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. I love how, um, you know, I relate it to my my own life. Yes, I, I have a culinary background, um, but cheese is something that I think finds people. You know, it's uh, so many people in our in our industry in the cheese industry would have this to say is that the one of the reasons why um, people get involved in cheese and stay in cheese is for the community. Oh and yeah, it's like you 100%. know. Yeah, the community of people are so inspiring and yourself as well. I'm so inspired by what you've done in this book and uh, and even also the other things that, that are ahead for us in, in this industry. Right. You know, cheese is something that is so popular these days and, and people just want more and more and more. Right. And it almost seems endless, um, yeah. the, the, the creative outlet that we yeah. can have in, in playing with cheese. Oh, for sure. I mean... I think, I mean, it started, you know, maybe five, six years ago, but it's like you go to any gathering or you go to anyone's house and it's like, you have to, like, you have to have a cheese plate out, right? I mean, you have it's to have- It's not a party it's, until the cheese shows up. Right, exactly. And, <laughs> you know, and a lot of people are just getting, you know, their cheeses from Trader Joe's or, you know, which is, I'm not, you know, that's not bad, but 
it's just that there's an interest there, right? And there's and there's a desire and like love for cheese. And yeah. and yeah, I think it's funny. I I never thought that I'd I, my career would be so so much of it would involve cheese, right? Like you just kind of I mean, you talk to so many people, you just kind of fall into it. Yeah, you and, do. And then, but then you really want to stay in it. And you too. want to stay in it. And part of it is, like you said, it's the community. It's, I, I really think I've never found another industry that is just so supportive of each other and like loving and just everyone like wants to build each other up, which is amazing because, you know, it's so obvious that when you build up another person, you're building, you know, everyone. Everyone rises together. Right, right. Really. So. I think it's wonderful. Yeah. So um, I know that you're working on another cookbook, though. Yeah. And this this ties into your first love, which is baking, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So right now I'm working on a cake book. Um, it's going to be called Piece of Cake. It's coming out in February or like early spring of 2022. Okay. Which, you know, as I now know, will be here before I, before I yes. know it. Yeah. Um, what a great title. It's, it's almost like, how is there not a cookbook called piece of cake? Piece of cake. Yeah. yeah. How has that not already been used? But that's, that's awesome. I know. I keep like looking up, just to make sure that there isn't <laughs> another book that's titled, but no one, but yeah, there is another book, but it, my whole, again, just similar to hot cheese. It's like my approach is, I think not everything can be simplified. Right. And we were talking about this, not everything yes. can be like dumbed down. I think to have really great results, you have to put in work sometimes. And, and I don't think people should shy. I think what shies people away is not necessarily the, the, the work they need to put into it, but just like a, a recipe that's not well written. Right. And so yeah. I, I just spend so much time writing recipes kind of from the, like, as if I was in the kitchen with, with the reader and kind of just showing, you know, just showing them what to do and, and not necessarily holding their hands per se, but uh, just feeling like they're really supported. And with cakes, they're all really, I try, they're not multi-layered, you know, cakes. It's all just like very simple, straightforward. You kind of want to make, you can make them during the weeknight, or if you want to, you can make them for special occasions. It just kind of runs the gamut of kind of like everyday cakes to a little bit to ones that are a little bit more celebratory, but you're not, you know, you're not spending entire day on them either. So the point is maybe that, that at least there is just some kind of cake every day. Right. Yeah. Every day we're eating. We, cake. Always, we all, you know, deserve a little pop of joy in our especially day. Especially this year. <laughs> yeah. Especially this year. So maybe you, could you try and get that book done a little bit faster. I know. <laughs> trying um but yeah i think we all deserve that little you know treat whether it's cheese or cake or chocolate or whatnot so one more maybe one more question here um before okay. we go there's a question um you've probably got some friends from seattle here on the call so what are your favorite cheese shops in seattle people if they're looking for cheese for ingredients for your book where should they go right i think I mean, my go-to is De Laurentiis. Has a really wonder, just like a beautiful cheese counter. I think they're open to traff to um, foot traffic now. Okay. Um, I, Janae, and I don't know who else has works there, and just like the cheesemongers are really knowledgeable, and you're just really in good hands when you're there. Fresh um, cheese, which is always one of the right, main cut reasons. to order. It just really, you're yeah, just, you're just totally treating yourself. It just feels really special to go. It makes a big difference, there. right? Um, and it, yeah, it's just like it's just the experience of buying cheese is just as much as fun as it is to like, eat it, right? Um, I agree totally. And then you you have you know their expert um, advice on how to pair it and how to store it and all that. So. Um, De La Rentis, when I can't get out to De La Rentis, which is in the Pike Place Market, I love PCC. Um, I think they, they are a um, kind of local chain of co-ops, but they're like supermarkets, but they have a really wonderful selection. And there's this, I haven't been, but I know another really great place kind of further south is PFI. Um, 
I don't know, Pacific food, maybe j someone in, in the chat can write out the full name, but they have a really great Big John PFI. Big John yeah. PFI. And they have a good selection of cheeses too. It's another grocery sort of style. Yeah, yeah, but it's just standalone. I think, yeah, Pacific food importers, yeah, they're wonderful. So I would say between those three, and they're all local, they're all local businesses, and I'm always love to support. Support local. Yeah. So we're, we're right at nine o'clock. I'll just um, give everyone a chance for like a couple more questions really quickly. If there's anything like this burning that you just really need to ask, now's your chance to ask it. Anything, I'm, Paulina, I'm that ready. you would, yeah, anything, Paulina, that you would um, want to add about your book? What are you, oh, I have a question, actually. You're doing, so you're doing a cooking class coming up. Do you know what you're going to be yeah, doing? Yeah, yeah, So I am, I kind of played around with the menu, and I decided I wanted to kind of kick it old school. Hi, and um, kick it old school with a few recipes that are very nostalgic. They have kind of a twist to them. So I'm doing the jalapeno popper, pigs in a blanket. Oh, okay, those look amazing. <laughs> yeah, so those, those are really are fun. Football, football tailgate Perfect party, written all season. of them. Yeah. Right, um, those are really good, and that's what I'm making. For the main, I am making um, a mac and cheese, so it's just topped with Ritz crackers, but it's just... Oh, yeah. I remember different. when you were developing that recipe, actually. I think you tried, like, several different toppings. Yeah, I tried them with flaming Hot Cheetos, and they just would kind of um, get soggy really quickly and didn't really bring that much. Such a great idea, but I think it's, like, the Cheetos, right. there's not really much to them, actually. No, there's not. So, what, I mean, so they, when they break they, down, it's, like, there's nothing right. there. So <laughs> it was a cool concept and like a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, but they didn't really work. And I, at the end of the day, I'm like, I want something that tastes good. That, Delicious. You know, over so like the Ritz cracker. Right. So, so that, and then the last dish is a tomato and fennel soup with grilled blue cheese croutons. Okay. Yeah. So just That's a twist on kind of a classic tomato soup with cheese. Yeah. 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 Actually fun, fun fact. Um, I made something um, sort of along that line for Chopped Canada one, or yeah, it was Chopped Canada one time. I made a soup and put grilled cheese croutons in it. So there you go. Yeah. We're on, we're on that we're green on... wave length totally. a little bit together. Yeah, yeah that's funny. Uh, one more question uh, that came in here from Roxana. She's, she's dying to know, um, were there any recipes that didn't make the cut? Ooh, um, I mean, there were so many, I mean, I, I wish I could have added a few more hachapuri, right, recipes, but that'll, that'll be for a future, yeah, variations, but that'll be for a future book, but, I mean, I feel like you could have so much fun with all sorts of different sandwiches. I would say, I think this book has 55 recipes, and it's just such a, sh you know, quick turnaround that I, I wouldn't say I had that much time to play around with, oh, you know what? There was a dish that I really wanted to include that my friend Charles turned me on to. It's a like Hong Kong style chicken. And it's basically chicken that is like flavored with different um, Chinese flavorings, you know, like soy sauce. And, and it's baked on top of rice with this like very like aromatic spicy tomato sauce. And it's like topped with cheese. And you oh, like that sounds it. And you can make so it with pork, too, like pork chops and it looks absolutely amazing. And yeah, I just didn't make it into the book. That's going in the next cheese book. Yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> awesome. So we've got Abby back. We turn it back over to Abby. Hi. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. That was a really good conversation. And now I feel like I, I was bookmarking recipes throughout the entire uh, conversation. So, and also if there's any leftovers after that class, Paulina, make sure you uh, oh, well. save them for me. Oh, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, but thank you guys all for attending. Thank you for your support for Book Larder, for Hot Cheese, for Paulina. Um, the link to purchase the book uh, is in the chat and it's on booklarder.com. You guys can get a personalized copy. Um, and thank you, Aaron, for moderating. That was great. Pleasure. And totally my pleasure. <laughs> Such an <laughs> honor. It's pairing. so great. It was good pairing. And thank uh, you, everyone. Thank you, Paulina. Really Congratulations.
Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> without my community, it's such a like group effort, right? Of, of cookbook authors need a lot of support. So I really appreciate everyone and everyone taking their, their afternoon and their evening um, to, to celebrate with us. Yeah, definitely. All right. We're excited to see everybody's Instagrams as you guys start cooking. Yes. All right. Cool. Have a good Aaron, evening. Thank, thank you so all. much. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for the questions.